it's 2023 now. Stop! and everybody has the opportunity to change things around and overcome new challenges. The challenge that I face comes from over a year ago and thousands of miles away. In Thailand, there lives a guy named Loyal Sido, and he's apparently the world's number one personal branding coach. If you look on the about page of his website, it says, if you wish to know more of my work online, feel free to Google my name, Loy Macedo, and you will get the results. If you do that, the first result is his other website. Anyway, in this series of four videos he put out over a year ago, he challenges all Christians and kind of casts doubt on different stories in the Bible. In 2011, he renounced his Christianity after preaching Jesus for many years and being a Bible preacher for 11 of those years. Apparently, he's kind of turned around his life. He lost a bunch of weight, overcame suicidal thoughts, and now he has a wife and kids. Now he's trying to wake up other people and cause Christians to have to defend themselves. Well, challenge accepted. Here's my first question. How do you know? How do you know there is a God who was there to witness he made light? Who was there? An angel? Angel taking down notes. Well, the Bible doesn't say anything about an angel being there taking notes and then being able to hand them to a man. Instead, God himself was there. He was the one that did it and he told Moses all about it. Then Moses wrote it down and that's how we have it. Whether or not you believe Moses is a whole different question, but that's how we got the account. And one day this angel communicated to one earthly human being. Word of mouth communicate. And you know and I know, word of mouth, if you communicate, what happens? You know? It wasn't just communicated through word of mouth though. The Genesis account is dated to around 1440 BC, having been written by Moses. These texts have been around a long time, but it's at least possible that when the stories were passed down, they were verified by others, and discrepancies in storytelling could be corrected, even if it's an oral tradition. The best answer that these Christians will give you is, okay, then who created all this? Who? Came out of nothing? They will say, you need to have faith. What? Have faith? Science and empirical evidence aren't the end-all be-all for deciding on things. There's plenty of things out there that we just assume. We're rational to believe them, for sure, but it's by belief and not by empirical evidence that we assume them. Here are five. Logical and mathematical truths. Science presupposes these as true. Using science to prove them is reasoning in a circle. Metaphysical truths, like there are minds other than my own. There's no way you can scientifically prove that or disprove it. Ethical beliefs. You can't run a scientific experiment to show why the Nazis are wrong. That's something that we know innately. Aesthetic judgments. Like goodness, beauty can't be proven or disproven by science. Science itself. Science is a method of discovery and making certain assumptions about the universe to do so, like the speed of light, for example. We can't actually measure the speed of light. It's as good of a guess as we can get. We all use faith, otherwise known as belief or trust, every day. It's not exclusive to religious people. If you ask a scientist or an atheist, so it came out of nothing, they'll say, I don't know. So when they say, I don't know, your default answer is, ah, exactly. That is why God created it. Which God? Allah? Some things just can't be proven by natural means, like I explained a minute ago. Another one of those things is the Big Bang. Everything after the Big Bang, sure, we can look at those things with the scientific lens, but before that, there wasn't any natural. Whatever created the universe had to have been supernatural. That's not a gap that we try to fill with God. That's a rational explanation for the existence of God. Which God that is, is a whole different matter, and that comes later. He created Adam and Eve, and God had a panchayat with them meeting. But just only thing is, don't eat that apple. And by the way, it was no ordinary apple. It was the fruit of good and evil. If you create someone like God did, and you give them the ability to make choices like God did, and then you take away one of those choices, you're forcing them into one path and not the other. Like you wouldn't force your child to love you. You can't force love. You have to give your child the option to choose something else. And if they choose you, you know the love is real. God had to give them the ability to choose the forbidden fruit so that if they were to reject it, he would know it's genuine. Uh, how is the snake talking? Was it sign language? If you actually see later on, God curses the snake and says, you will, you know, crawl on your belly. Genesis talks about God making the universe and making the earth and making man out of dust, but you're hung up on a talking snake? My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined.
If God can make man out of dust and make him talk, couldn't he also do the same for a snake technically? Adam and Eve, they ate the apple. Now, a God who is all powerful, all knowing, there is nothing that happens which he doesn't know. So he didn't know this? Let's say you've got a kid. You hear something break inside your house, and you're pretty sure it's the kid that did it. You go over and you ask the kid what happened, even though you see the kid standing there and you see the thing that's broken. You know that the kid did it, but you still ask them because you want them to make the choice whether to lie to you or to tell the truth. God gives Adam and Eve a chance to repent and to come back to him, but instead they blame each other, and so he has to remove them from the garden. Then second thing, Adam and Eve kept giving birth to children. So, hey, this is your brother, this is your sister, brother, sister, brother, sister. So now, did the brother have sex with the sister? I made a video about this already, so here's the short version. Because of the long lives that they had, and the almost perfect nature that they had, and the fact that sin was just a little thing in the world at that point, it's not even guaranteed that incest was a problem back then. Have you considered one thing? Adam and Eve created Magic Garden. There's no mention of dinosaurs. Ooh, that's a good one. It also doesn't mention praying mantises. What's your point? Besides, the Hebrew word tanian is used 30 times in the Old Testament, and it's translated either as sea monster, serpent, or dragon. There's also the behemoth, whose tail is described as being like a cedar tree. No animals we know of except some dinosaurs were built like that, not even elephants or hippopotamuses. The debate isn't settled, of course, but like other things, it's not mentioned by the Bible because it's not important to the main point of the Bible, which is to point people to God. It's fake! Because your book says there are all answers for everything, right? It's a word of God, right? God. The Bible doesn't have answers for literally everything. Computers, cars, skyscrapers, telephones. They're not mentioned in the Bible, but they're still things that we have nowadays. So does that mean that the Bible isn't true? Well, no. Again, they're just not important to the overall story of the Bible. That's about it. Stay tuned for parts 2, 3, and 4. See you next time.